Welcome back. The president of Mauritius, Amena Gurib Fakim, is expected to leave office today, March 23, after she was accused of financial impropriety. Mauritians share their views on the scandal that will see Africa's only female president step down. President Gurib Fakim was accused of using a credit card issued by an international non-governmental organization to buy clothes and jewelry. The chemistry professor appointed to the largely ceremonial post in 2015 as the island nation's first female president has denied any wrongdoing, saying she has refunded all the money in question. She violated the constitution, there's no argument about it. And as such, she had to resign or else she would have been sacked, impeached. And, uh, but even before that, uh, before that episode, there were accusations of gross misconduct leveled against her, first by the press, uh, which published uh, uh, documents, even uh, documenting evidence about that. And then the Prime Minister himself at a press conference argued that he had damning evidence against her. And as a, you know, in Mauritius, the President is a moral authority. And hence, uh, it was uh, inevitable, uh, because besides, the parliament in its majority, great majority, unanimously, all the parties in the opposition and the government had called for a resignation. The local low press newspaper reported that the president had shopped in Italy and Dubai using a credit card issued by Planet Earth Institute. The organization supports education by offering scholarships and the president served there as an unpaid director. The newspaper reported that the card was to promote a doctorate program named after the president. It is not a serious mistake. The card was given to her to use and not to keep. So she used it. She could have come forward to explain it. But I don't believe it was a reason for her to resign. She should not have used that card while still being the president of the republic. However, I do not think she should have resigned. The conclusions of a commission of inquiry should have been reported before the decision to resign is made. Mauritius Prime Minister Pravin Jognot had said that President Gurib Fakim would resign last week, but then just days after that announcement, the president backtracked, saying she would not resign before her lawyer told reporters that she would eventually step down after all. Well, we can forgive her, because in the past there have been more serious issues and the offenders are still in their post. I do not think that she did something really serious. She did not use the government's money. Mauritius markets itself as a bridge between Africa and Asia. Its economy relies on sugar, textiles and tourism, but it is trying to develop new sectors like offshore banking, business outsourcing and luxury real estate. And in Zimbabwe, the government expects output of its second biggest export earner, tobacco, to rise 5.8% to 200 million kilograms this year as farmers started selling their crop at the country's auctions. New President Emerson Mangangwa, who came to power in November after a de facto military coup that forced Robert Mugabe to resign, has said reviving the agriculture sector is one of his main goals to ensure food security in future. The Southern African nation is desperately short of dollars due to its struggling economy. Although traditionally, liquidity improves during the tobacco selling season as cash is brought into the country. Over the last five years, more companies have been financing farmers to produce tobacco, helping to boost production. The government appreciates the coming on board of the tobacco contracting companies where they financed 82% of the crop in 2017-2018 agricultural season. I therefore wish to commend the contracting companies for, pro for providing this much needed support as it has enabled farmers to increase production and improve the quality of the golden leaf. According to the Vice President, Constantino Chiwanga, the government is extending the tobacco funding model to other crops like wheat and soya bean, whose production has remained depressed because farmers lack money to buy seed, fertilizer and pesticides. 
Farmers say they are happy with the start of the season. I brought 35 bales and they were the ones that opened the floor. I am happy with the buying price of $4.90 per kilogram. The price is good enough. I should be able to go back to the field again. My tobacco fetched between $4.90 to $4.99 per kilogram, and the lowest price was $2.20. But I am satisfied, and this will push me to produce more next season, as long as the prices remain stable. Zimbabwe exports its tobacco mostly to China, South Africa and Belgium, earning the country $1.2 billion between May 2016 and December 2017, compared with $1.3 billion from gold, and that's according to central bank data. The region experienced a dry spell at the beginning of the year, thus threatened to cut crop yields. But buyers says tobacco, which earns more than $800 million annually, had escaped the weather effects. There was a dry spell in January, which affected a lot of the smallholder farmers. But the quality that they, uh, we see is very promising. And we hope that they continue to grade their crop properly and present it well for the market. The tobacco industry and marketing board said tobacco production should increase from 189 million kilograms to 200 million kilograms this year. Agriculture has been starved of large-scale investment since Mugabe's government began its seizure of white-owned farms in 2000. But Mungagwa has said he welcomes investment, including from the white farmers whom he has promised to compensate. In the meantime, a Cyprus investor has signed a $4.2 billion deal to develop a platinum mine and refinery in Zimbabwe, an investment that President Emerson Mangagwa says shows the country was open for business. Signing the agreement with Cyprus-based Caro Resources, Mines Minister Winston Chintando said work would start in July with the first output of platinum group metals expected in 2020, aiming to reach 1.4 million ounces annually within three years. It was unclear, however, where all the funding would come from, and analysts say the project start date of July looked very ambitious. Keen to revive the mining sector after years of re resistance by foreign investors during Robert Mugabe's rule, President Mangango says the deal showed things had changed since his ascendancy after Mugabe's ousting in November. And that's a wrap on the program for today and, of course, for the week. Thank you very much for being part of it. I'm Chimezi Obi Iwago.